Hello everybody. How's it going? Welcome on into a, a no gameplay stream today. We're just going to be talking about the N64 challenge. About what games are coming up next. About how we determined what games were coming up next. All that stuff. What's up, Azertoni, Sub-Zero, Smoke, Rain, Hick, there, Tycho, thank you for the dab, Tycho. Real Tech Samosis, Quixotic86, Blitz Retroplay, Demina has Gone, Earn the Almighty, and Kydrian. And everyone else out there, hello. So, hi. Uh, we beat Dr. Mario 64 last night. It was very legitimate. It was very earned. Um, and so now we're at the part of the challenge where I'm not picking the games. We're going to do ten games... Uh, and the first five were nominated by the subscribers of this channel, so thank you. We had a really good turnout. Uh, it was over 50% <clears throat> of all the subs ended up submitting a nomination of five games. It took about a, it took about a half hour for the rush to wear off, and then I had, was getting, like, my hands dirty with all the, the raffle picks and trying to go through the data a little bit. Um, so games 6 through 10 will be picked by the subs uh, in a raffle format. They put the games in there, and I drew them. I weighted them appropriately if they got picked multiple times. And then uh, games 11 through 15 are randomly chosen. It's totally random. And I will do... It's not going to be a full chart party, unfortunately, Quicks, because I only had about two hours to work on this between last night and... I really just spent like the last hour cramming a bunch of shit into OBS, so uh, it's going to be quick and dirty, but uh, we'll try and do better next time. But um, yeah, so why don't we why don't we go talk a bit? That's ah, okay. Don't you don't know? It's not. It's not Ern. What's up, Soreness? So. Uh, let's talk a bit about the the sheer numbers here. Okay, the chat's in the way there. So 28 subs nominated. 28 subs sent me a list of nominations. Uh, and, and five games were on each list. So that's a total of 140 nominations that, uh, that were sent for consideration in this raffle. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot to go through. There's a lot to to harness and wrangle and put on a list and all that stuff. But seriously, it's it's a lot of support. I'm glad you guys were interested in participating in a small way. So it was my pleasure to go through that data. Um 94 different games were nominated. I, When I came up with this plan, I was like, alright, I'll just go through all the games that everyone picked, and we'll talk about them a little bit, and then uh, and then we'll announce the winners. No, you guys picked 94 different games off of a list of 394. That's 23.5% of the entire N64 library. Which is really funny to me, and really, like, honestly heartwarming. Because, you know, when people talk about consoles especially consoles like the n64 they're like oh there's only like what 20 10 20 good games but you guys were just really uh kind of going going by your own beat doing what you thought was best some people picked their favorite games some people picked troll games some people picked games they wanted to see me play some people wanted to see games that they just don't ever see on twitch so there was a really a wide, um, a wide variety of games to choose from, and so I'm gonna have to really kind of restrain the conversation we have about the games that were nominated. Uh, but we'll get to that in a little bit. I'm also gonna talk about um, a, a statistic with this that I don't have a slide for. I did not. Um, I did not have time to put it all together, but I do have the data about it. And that is, um, something that I'm kind of, it's basically 
who agreed with who, right? Um, who agreed with who? And so what I did is I took everyone's list of five games, and every time someone picked one of the games on their list, I gave them a point. So the more points you have, the more your picks have in common with, uh, with other people. And the fewer points you have, the fewer picks you have in common with other people. Now, most people fell uh, in the four to five range. There were seven people who had four, uh, four points. There were five people who had five points. But then there, were, there was a spike. There was four people who had seven points. That's to be expected. But the two sides that I... And I'm going to actually call some people out here. I just want to... I want to congratulate a couple people here. Uh, the two sides that I want to focus on are the extremes of this this bar. And I, I'm sorry I don't have a visual representation to show you guys, but I ran out of time. Um, on the high end of the bar, we had one person with eight points and one person with nine points. So these are the two top scorers, you could say, in terms of lining their picks up with everyone else. Yeah, the most unique versus the most popular. Exactly, Sub-Zero. Exactly. So, um, the, the person who had the most, uh, picks in common with everyone else kind of came in actually pretty late, and actually very late, it came in last night, I think is the most recent sub to the channel, and that is Trachea44, who had nine points. All of his picks he had in common with somebody, multiple with multiple people. Um, until he got his sub in and put his picks in, with 8 points in second place, it was Blitz Retroplay, and he was in that spot for pretty much the entire nomination period. Um, he was one of the first people to send his picks in, and, uh, they were very much in line with what other people were picking. And so what that, what those points mean, essentially, in terms of what to expect going forward, it's, A, it's fun data, and B... Uh, the higher the point value, the more likely that uh, a game that you picked is going to get played, because it had more nominations. Um, and then there's the other side of the spectrum. <laughs> then there's the people with zero points. And these people, I, I like these lists a lot. I like the I like the lists that have very few points in common, because they're sort of they're ahead of their time, right? They're not they're not interested in the trends. They they're left fielders just doing their own thing, their time will come. Two people, two people got zero points, and they're both here right now. I see them both in chat. The two people who had completely unique nomination lists that had no, no picks in common with anybody are Azure Tony and Quixotic86. Their lists were complete standouts. <laughs> so, your odds are low, fellas, but I greatly appreciated the lists you sent in. And you never know. You never know. Every game had a shot, because again, look at that, there were 94 different games, right? So I tried to weight the games with multiple picks appropriately, um, but without making them too heavy, but without making them more than just like double odds, right? Because at this point, it's basically 1% per, per game. I had to weight them a little bit more than that so that they, they had a more relevant shot of being picked if they got multiple nominations. Uh, okay, so that's done. Um, import games were all available. They were available to be chosen. And a couple people bit. A couple people bit, but not many. Of all the games chosen, 90 of them were North American releases. There were four Japanese picks that came from four different people. Uh, obviously, that number will go up. I fully expect it to go up. 
<laughs> As we burn our way through the more well-known games, people are going to start taking fringe shots. Um, but yeah, to start off, mostly American releases. Pretty much to be expected. So now we're going to talk about the Unique Pick Index. The Unique Pick Index, and this is kind of just to give you an idea of how we ended up with so many games in the pool. The Unique, Pindex is, the Unique Pick Index is a scale of 1 to 5. If everybody picked the same 5 games, the Pick Index would be a 1. If everyone had unique lists like Tony and Quicks, it would be a 5. So basically it's just the number of games picked divided by the number of subs who send a nomination. And that is how we got our Unique pick index uh i hope this font size is appropriate the unique pick index was 3.35 <laughs> on average you guys had three games on your list that nobody else picked and almost three and a half so it was a really really huge sample size to work with now that's again it's kind of expected right now there's a lot of options there's so many options out there People are going to be all over the place. This You should only expect this number to go down over the course of the challenge as the number of options shrink and shrink and shrink. People will kind of filter it down and down and down to a more similar set of games. But yeah, on average, you guys put up three games that nobody else did per person and then almost a half a game on top of that. Um, before yesterday, <laughs> before yesterday when we got, I think, like five um, five new lists, it was at a 3.71. It was, it was almost, it was creeping on four. And, and I'll say this too, um, you can thank, you can thank Mo for that number coming down too, because he and Cindy put together the same list, <laughs> and so they, uh, they both had a seven-point list and uh, brought that UPI down. But without that, uh, it was it was pretty high. And and the other picks that came in yesterday too also brought that uh, brought that number down as well because there were a couple new games on the list um, that I hadn't seen on anybody else's lists. But um, there was a lot of like Trachea's list came in yesterday. He had the most in common with everybody else. Um, and then two other lists came in that had four points apiece. So, it was definitely going to come down. But, there you go. Uh, so there was a lot. There was a lot of games on here that, uh, I was surprised to see. There was a lot of games on here that I was surprised not to, <laughs> excuse me, that I was surprised not to see. And there was just a lot of games. <laughs> so let's um let's talk about some of the games that got picked I need to put chat up here somewhere hold up you guys can go down here so I've got three tiers of games that I want to talk to you guys about tier one are the games that got four votes. That was the maximum number of votes that a game got across 28 nomination lists. Um, the, tier, the second tier are games that got three votes. We'll be going over all of those. And, uh, and then we're going to go over tier three, which are games that got two votes, but just the ones that surprised me because there were a lot and uh and i i didn't have enough room or time to go over all of them tier four was the bulk yeah tier four is everything that got one vote and there were a lot of those it, it is very much sort of an exponential scale you'll see where you know one votes there's a lot of those and then two votes there's a good chunk and then three votes is is a much more smaller group and then four votes is smaller than that all right so, uh, in no particular... Well, no, I should actually order this, right? Let's talk about these from most surprising to me, or at least surprising to me, to most surprising. So, we're going to start in Tier 3, and we're going to work our way left. 
Um, I was surprised that Army Men Sarge's Heroes. That got two picks. It's not terribly surprising, because uh, there are, what, three Army Men games on the N64. It's a pretty popular franchise at this point in history. But um, I was surprised that it, that it got double picks. I was I was thinking there was either going to be a spread of Army Men games or no Army Men games at first. But the Army Men fans, all two of them, <laughs> they came out, they put up some uh, some numbers for Army Men. Um, I don't really have a lot to say about the Army Men franchise, except that it was just so prolific back then. Like, it really was. They were doing, like, two games a year. Just so much Army Men. Um, I was surprised to see Cruising USA. Um, that was my second ever N64 game. And again, in a franchise that there's three Cruising games on the N64... Um, but that's kind of like a notoriously bad port. It's a very early game. It's a very rough game. Um, but two people did, in fact, vote for Cruising USA. So, it's a game that I actually considered, again, because, like, if I had gone chronologically, I probably wouldn't have done it. If I had gone through, um, my first five N64 games as the first five of this challenge, I would have played it second. Um... 100%, I'd have to unlock all the cars, so it's like 21 playthroughs minimum. Uh, you have to cruise the USA 21 times, half hour apiece, probably about 10, 11 hours. If you if you don't fuck up. Or if you do fuck up, I think it's more like a 20, 20 minute run if you do it all in one go. Uh, what else? What else was I surprised to see? I was surprised to see Body Harvest. Body Harvest um, is a pretty unique game, and it's an N64 exclusive, but it's not super well-known. Um, it's made by the people who made Grand Theft Auto, and it's very much kind of like a prototype of GTA um, in a lot of ways. But I, I definitely was surprised to see that get two picks. Not as much as some of the other games, obviously, but I was still surprised. Um... I was surprised to see War Gods. War Gods, a, uh, a midway 3D fighting game, kind of the the test design for Mortal Kombat 4. It was their first 3D fighting game. Um, two people picked that one. And there were a lot of fighting games. You know, there's, there's not a ton of fighting games on the N64, but um, there were a lot of fighting games that got picked. I'll say that. So War Gods got two votes. Um, I was surprised to see Our Marines Project Swarm. Which is basically if Turok and Halo had a baby and that baby came out before Halo. <laughs> that got two votes. Uh, it's very much kind of in line with the Turok design in terms of its presentation and control scheme, but it's very sci-fi and against space bugs instead of dinosaurs that game got two picks um i was surprised to see tom and jerry fists of fury or sorry fists of furry what's up Aragoria? well we're letting the subs pick right now it's not up to me um, I don't actually know anything about this game. I've never seen it. I've never played it. I've never touched it. I know it's made by New Kid Co. They were responsible for the uh, the Elmo games on the N64. So that got two votes. Um, I was surprised to see Aero Gauge, which is kind of like a futuristic racer. It's not one that's often talked about on the N64. Um, but it ended up getting two votes. Two people stood up for Arrow Gauge. And, uh, finally, I, this kind of goes without saying, um, yeah, Bass Hunter 64 got two votes. <laughs> two people were out there trying to get the fishing games going early. 
and I that made me happy. It made me happy to see two people actually actually go on for fishing games. So there again, there were a lot of games that got two votes. Um, I think there was over twenty games that got two votes. Uh, yeah, that is actually correct, Heck There, that is one hundred percent correct. <laughs> So now we're going to go move on to all the games that got three votes, and we're going to go over all of them. It's a smaller group, so we can go over every game that got three votes. Yep, someone else voted for our Marines, Scuddy. That is correct. So, uh, yeah. Games that got three votes. Wow, we've already been doing this a half hour, huh? Okay... Games that got three votes. These ones had a very... What is going on here? Stop that. Stop that. Uh, these games had a very good chance of being picked. Very, very good chance of being picked. And we're just going to go through these in alphabetical order. Uh, first up, Gex64, Enter the Gecko. Um, three people <laughs> voted for Gex 64. So those Gex fans are coming out of the woodworks early, getting those 3D platformers in. Um, there's two Gex games on the N64, and they both got votes. But Gex 64 was the runaway favorite between the two, for sure. Because, again, this, these are I know it's only three votes, but... We go back to that number of 3.35 or 3.1 or whatever it was. Like, you guys were not lining up very often. And so for somebody to get three votes, it was, like, really telling that people... That it was that it was a popular game. Like, I know it's just 3 out of 28, but it was hard to get those three. So these are definitely uh, an upper-class kind of community pick. Turn that down a little bit more. Uh, next up, Harvest Moon 64. Not terribly surprising to see that up there. Um, really, most of the RPGs on the N64, that they're few and far between, but they all got some love, uh, pretty much. And uh, Harvest Moon 64 got a lot of uh, support from people. People want to see that farming action happening. Not too surprised to see that up there. It's a popular game. Uh, next is Hexen. We had three votes for Hexen. Um, First-person shooters are more common on the N64 as a franchise than RPGs. Um, but Hexen probably isn't at the top of most people's list, I would think. Uh, but Hexen, Hexen did manage to pull three votes. So, Hexen performed well in this nomination poll. Next up is Mega Man 64. Uh, it's just a port of Mega Man Legends for the N64, but... People are excited to see that. Obviously, a lot of people love Mega Man Legends. So Mega Man 64 did a good job this time around. Finishing second place on the podium. Uh, next up is Mission Impossible. Mission Impossible got three votes. Uh, which is a bit... It's, that one's kind of surprising to me. It's a well-known game. But it's also an extremely common and... Uh, sometimes frowned upon game. I don't really know a lot about it. I know more about its development than I know about the actual game. But Mission Impossible managed to pull three votes. And after that is Mortal Kombat 4. Mortal Kombat 4 got three votes. People want to see daily picks of Quan Chi. Um... People want to see weapons in Mortal Kombat. Um, yeah, I mean, it's the first 3D Mortal Kombat. It was a milestone in the franchise. And has it aged well? Yeah, you know. That's up to you to decide. Speaking of Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat Mythology Sub-Zero. Also three votes. People... Got a lot of votes in for Mortal Kombat. So, Sub-Zero got plenty of love from people. 
And by plenty, I mean three. Three loves. One love from three people. <laughs> but Sub-Zero did manage to land a spot in Tier 2 right next to Mortal Kombat 4. Double Mortal Kombat representation on that tier. That's impressive. Next up, Ogre Battle 64. Again, not really a big surprise. People like RPGs around here, and Ogre Battle is arguably one of the best, if not the best, for the system. So, that got some early love from people. Showed up on the list. Alongside Harvest Moon. Okay. And then we have Star Wars Shadows of the Empire. Four Star Wars games on the N64. Shadows of the Empire pulling a lot of support. That was the first one for the system. And, uh, and yeah, managed to get three votes. Gets a tier two spot. It's a first person shooter vehicle based uh, hybrid game. So not a pure first person shooter, but uh, I think that means that Hexen is the only first person shooter on this list thus far. Because Mission Impossible is over the shoulder and Shadows of the Empire has sections that are not first person. And then after that we have Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. Um, I will say this, the Tony Hawk franchise, uh, all three of them... Oh, you're right. Well, Armourines is in Tier 3, though, Scuddy. Armourines is in Tier 3. It's not in Tier 2. Um, the entire Tony Hawk franchise, all three of them, managed to land in either Tier 2 or Tier 3. Uh, people put up a lot of votes for Tony Hawk, all three of them. But 2 was the one that pulled the farthest ahead, landing in Tier 2 over its dad and son and then finally in tier two we have wcw nwo revenge our first wrestling game to show up in our data and i think i think yeah this was the only wrestling game uh to get any votes this time around uh, Battle for Naboo, Texamosis. Yeah, we got a Hogan up there. So there's your there's your second tier. Those are all the games. All eleven of those each got eleven uh, three votes, and that just brings us to tier one, which is the uh, which is the the highest echelon, the most popular of games. That got four votes. The most amount of votes and it looks it looks like this that's it chameleon twist it's the only game that got four votes chameleon twist was the most requested game on the list and so it has the best chance of being uh, selected. I didn't expect that. <laughs> I did not expect that. But yeah, Chameleon Twist got the most votes. And it was in the lead for the entire time, uh, really. Like, once we had an actual sample size, um, it got a very early lead. It was with, it had three votes in the first uh, nine nominations uh the first nine people who sent in a list three people had it on it and then it got a fourth pick right at the very end and uh yeah chameleon twist is uh is your nomination champion but will any of these games actually get pulled in the raffle that is the question is it not i think i'm out of data I think I'm out of data, guys. I think it's time to tell you all what the next 10 games of the challenge are going to be. Quest 64 got two votes. Quest 64 got two votes. Quest 64 got two votes. 
Goldeneye got one vote. You were the only person that put up Goldeneye, Dorky. The most surprising single vote pick, Goldeneye's definitely up there. Goldeneye and Majora's Mask up there. Ocarina of Time, zero votes, yeah. No one picked Ocarina of Time. Um, there were a lot that with one vote that I was kind of surprised to see, like, uh, like Doom 64, um, uh, Paper Mario had one vote, Kirby had one vote, just a lot of the bigger ones, yeah, people, people put one vote in for, and, uh, and instead we got these games, which I'm not mad about, I'm not mad about that at all, I can have those waiting in the wings, if I need a, a comfy familiar game, a civilized game later on, you guys have something to pick, uh, something to pick later on down the line. You were the only one to vote Mischief Makers, yes, Soreness. Nobody else voted for that. Alright, so, let's head over here. And, um, let's reveal what the next, uh, ten games of the challenge are going to be. Let's put chat... Let's make chat super tiny. There you go. Super tiny chat. Alright. It's reveal time. So. Game number six of the challenge is going to be our first true first person shooter we are we are opening the sub picks with a first person shooter selected by Ronnie 1031 Scuddy and sub zero smoke rain the next game we'll be playing is Hexen. Hexen is game number six. Um, I'm going to give this game a blindness rating of 100%. I know it exists. I've played it for about one minute in my life. I've never watched it. I know The, I, the only thing I know about it is that it's a spin-off or a sequel to Heretic, and I played Heretic as a kid, and I think it has classes. I don't know anything else about this game. It is going to be massively blind. So, Hexen is number six. Once we finish Hexen, we are going to be moving on to a sports-ish game. Not really true uh, simulation sports. But we'll be moving on to a game selected by Tone of the Sun and the Rhine 10. And that game is Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Tony Hawk 1 will be game number 7. Uh, I'm going to give it a blindness rating of about 25%. Um, because I've nearly finished it before, but I've never done a 100% run on it. So, I'm, uh, I'm expecting to have a good kind of early boost through that game, but then I'm gonna have to rely on years of Tony Hawk skill <laughs> to help me figure out the last parts of that game. Alright. Yeah, that's true, Quix. That's true. I'm hoping maybe the audio quality is going to be so compressed that it won't even get picked up, but you never know. So Tony Hawk 1 is game number 7. Now, remember when we were talking about those points earlier? I said that the people who had the most points were going to have the most likelihood to see a game that they wanted to see. And uh, I did say that Blitz Retroplay was leading that charge for a long time. And so number eight is a game chosen by Blitz Retroplay, but also by Soreness Bear. And 
It is a game. It's uh, we'll call it an action game. Uh, we'll call it um, we'll call it a game that I've already talked about today. And that game, after we finish Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, is Army Men Sarge's Heroes. Army Men Sarge's Heroes will be the eighth game chosen for the challenge. We're going to have our first look at the Army Men franchise. I've never played this game. I watched MRR Knight play it for about a half hour one day. Um, it seems pretty cool. I'd be down to check it out. So I'm going to give that one a blindness rating of 90%, maybe a little higher. But Army Men Sarge's Heroes is our eighth game. Now, our ninth game was a surprise. <laughs> it is the only game on the list that only had one person pick it. It is... A game that was submitted at the very last minute. And it is a game that I like a lot. And I was honestly super surprised to see it get a spot among these other games. Uh, it has a blindness rating of 0%. I have 100%ed it more than once. That game is Mystical Ninja starring Goemon. As nominated by Ramses91. While the credits for Dr. Mario 64 were going, he put that one in, and it managed to uh, it managed to squeak in. It managed to squeak in at number nine. So, Mystical Ninja, a game I know very well, a game I love very well, a game I've streamed in its entirety on this channel before. That'll be a nice little uh, a nice little familiar break for me after. Two and a half games that I don't know. I'll get to play some Mystical Ninja. Um, and then it's time for the last of the sub-nominations. After this, it was all just picked at random. So, even though there was 28 people, even though there was 94 games, there's only one spot left up for grabs. It is a game that had two votes. It is a game that is a sports game. Again, sort of in a looser sense. Um, it is a game that was chosen by Trachea44 and Kydrian. And that game is Snowboard Kids. In at number 10. Um, blindness rating 100%. I know that this is one of the more kind of popular games that people had um, for their N64s. It was always out of stock at the rental store for me. I've owned Snowboard Kids 2 for a while, but I do not own Snowboard Kids 1, so I do need to buy it, and that's why it's in the number 10 slot, uh, just to make sure I have enough time for it to get here. So, those are the five games that made it their way out of the sub-nomination pool. Thank you all so much for uh for submitting all your lists we'll do this again for you guys when we reach game number 24 no that's not right 19 when we reach game number 19 we're going to open up the list again and you guys will be able to put some nominations in there so the next games chosen the next five were just pulled at random off of a list I just took the list we had and I grabbed five games off of it through the power of random number generation game number 11 on our list is our first introduction of a, an N64 accessory um, we're going to need an accessory to 100% this game uh, and that accessory is the transfer pack. The thing that slides into the back of the controller and that you can pop Game Boy games into. And so our number 11 pick is... Mickey Speedway USA. Yeah, Mickey Speedway USA. Uh, 
does have transfer pack support. Um, it is a racing game made by Rare, uh, Disney flavored, but uh, but Mario Kart in nature. Um, yeah, it's a Rare developed game. It's I think it's our first Rare game of the challenge, surprisingly, right? Yeah, this is going to be our first game made by Rare, is actually Mickey Speedway USA. <laughs> but yep, that uh, that will use the transfer pack. I'm sorry for uh, for psyching you guys out with that misleading that misleading uh, bit of trivia that you all thought it was going to be Pokemon Stadium, uh, but it is in fact Mickey Speedway USA. Just kidding, Pokemon Stadium number twelve, <laughs> back to back transfer pack games. Um, Pokemon Stadium will be the number 12 game on the list once we finish with Mickey's Speedway USA. So we're going to keep that thing slotted in. Stadium is number 12. Will I use the transfer pack in Stadium? I don't know yet. I really need to think about that. One of the benefits of having these games mapped out in advance now is I'll be able to kind of figure out what 100% looks like. Um, and if you have any input, if any of you have any input or you want to do the research and help me figure it out, you are more than welcome to. I will gladly accept your input. Um, but I don't know that I necessarily want to play through Gen 1 just to say I played through Pokemon Stadium. I think they kind of exist in next to each other, but not as part of the same experience. Um, but we'll see. Maybe we'll figure something out. We'll see. All right. So that's two of the random games picked. And there's two of the random games chosen. We got some transfer pack time in, back to back. Hundred percent probably all weapons and secrets. Hmm. I think secret stages definitely. I don't know about all weapons and all secrets, but all secret stages maybe. Uh, I don't know if it can recognize EverDrive's text messages. I have no idea. You can play Gen 1 on the N64 with that, yeah. You can play through the entire uh, Pokemon game within the Pokemon Stadium environment. Yep, we beat Shard, Edhorse. It is done. We're now now announcing the next 10 games. So, after Mickey Speedway and Pokemon Stadium is... Kobe Bryant in NBA Courtside, our first true, true sports game, very, played very seriously. Um, we are going to be playing Kobe Bryant in NBA Courtside as our first sports game of the challenge. Yeah, RIP Kobe Bryant. We're going to get his first game out of the way early. It's an N64 exclusive. Our first basketball game. Yeah, there's two court sides. There's court side and court side two. And I think a third one on the GameCube? Or like something that's like kind of NBA court side-ish with Kobe Bryant on the GameCube? Can't remember. But there were a lot of sports games on the list. We we're going to have to hit them at some point, so we managed to pull one in this first batch of random. And speaking of things that are... Uh, that are populating this list heavily. How about our first wrestling game? How about our first wrestling game in at number 14? And that wrestling game is... WWF No Mercy. Um, I guess I should go back and kind of talk about the blindness ratings on each of these games. Uh, Mickey Speedway USA is probably about an 85% blindness... I've played it a little bit, but I've never really tried to beat it. Pokemon Stadium, I'd say, is probably about a 20% blindness. I've rented it as a kid. I've played through most of it, but I don't really know what the end game looks like. I've never played NBA Courtside, and the only thing I know about WWF No Mercy is that Dick Dickity Dog song that's in it that makes me laugh every time I hear it. <laughs> but No Mercy is our first wrestling game of the challenge. You can see The Rock there on the cover. Um... You guys are going to have to tell me a lot of rest stuff, because I am not rest knowledgeable. 
but we'll get through it. We'll get through that one. And that just leaves us with uh, with one more random pick. Once we get through uh, these ten games, I'll be picking the next five after all this. And I'm going to reserve those picks until we get to the end of this. I kind of need to see how I feel. Um, if I'm feeling fresh and I'm feeling like I can do anything, I might pick some more challenging or weirder games. If I'm super worn out, I might just go all comfort food. Who knows? But... Um, our, our last random game is actually a very well-known game. Um, I don't think it got any votes, but it's one of the more marquee N64 titles, and it managed to get pulled in random select. And, uh, and that game is Banjo-Tooie. We're going to do Tooie before Kazooie. That's just how it worked out. But we are going to round out the random select games with a 3D platformer from Rare in the form of Banjo-Tooie. So there you go. Um, blindness rating on that is about 60%. I started to play through it on Rare Replay and I just kind of got worn out with it because I went straight from Kazooie into Tooie and I, it it wore me down. But, um, but Banjo-Tooie is going to be number 15. And so uh, there you have it. There's the next 10 games we're going to watch. Or that I'm going to play and that you're going to watch. Hexen, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, Army Men, Sarge's Heroes, Mystical Ninja starring Goemon, Snowboard Kids, Mickey Speedway USA, Pokemon Stadium, Kobe Bryant and NBA Courtside, WWF No Mercy, and Banjo-Tooie. What do you guys think? What do you guys think about that list? Is it good? I have no idea, Ed Horse. I have absolutely no idea. Yeah, you can call it rigged now, Quicks. That's fair. It's lacking in quest. It's true. There's no quest on this list. <laughs> Thank you, Sub. Thank you, Sub. Yeah, we had a most of the uh, most of the RPGs got votes, but none of them made it in on this on this round. So Hexen will probably start. I don't know. There's a chance we'll start it tonight. I'm not a hundred percent sure. I think if I'm going to be doing golf commentary all day, I might be a little worn out. But we'll certainly see. Um, we'll certainly see. Yeah, Chameleon Twist. Chameleon Twist got the most love, but it couldn't. Uh, it couldn't make it in. I got snubbed. But that's okay. It means it's still out there for next time. It'll be 15 games until we go to your guys' picks again, but hey, that just means the odds of what the games you want to see go up next time, right? Maybe. Maybe not. You guys might just pick even more different games next time. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do a Neo Turf Masters tournament here at uh, twitch.tv. I'll be hosting into it, Drakia. We do a golf tournament on Sundays, and this is the last tournament for, I think, a month or something like that, but we've been doing them for a couple of months now. Um, I do need to buy a couple things for this list. Snowboard Kids and Banjo-Tooie are where they are because I need to buy those carts. I have the other eight already. I also need to buy the Game Boy Color Mickey's Racing Adventure to use um, with Mickey's Speedway. So those are the three things I need to buy in this batch. It was pretty cost light for me this time around. But yeah, we got a we got a racing game in there. We got an extreme sports. We got some action, some three D platforming, some first person shooter, some res, some Pokemon. I do have a transfer pack. Yeah, I do have a transfer pack, Dorky. That one is covered. Not on this channel, no. We're going to be hosting the channel that it's on. But 
But yep. Our road is our road is laid in front of us. Um I guess right now I'm just kinda of stalling for time until Mogo's live now. <laughs> Do you guys want to talk about, uh, do you have any questions about the votes or the data or anything like that we can get into? Or just any questions about the challenge in general, maybe? Hey, Trachea, thank you for gifting a sub to Fryyak. Thank you so much for that. That is greatly appreciated. Oh, did he say he might be late? I know he's not live yet. I know he's not live yet. We're just going to have to kill some time. If something doesn't come in time for a slot, will it move? Yeah, if there is for some reason a giant delay or I tear through games, like, I don't have Snowboard Kids. That's the first one on the list that I don't have right now. So if something crazy happened and I beat four games before Snowboard Kids got here, we would either do Mickey Speedway or Pokemon Stadium and just bump Snowboard Kids back. Are there any nommed games... I'm sad didn't end up going through that I wanted to see. Oh yeah, tons. Tons, really. There were a lot of games that I was really excited to play. And, uh... And, uh... Didn't, didn't get through. Um, any games I'm, I'm relieved didn't get through the stage? Also true. Yeah. There were some that got a, a lot of votes. <laughs> Two or three votes that I was like, wait, what? What? Stop voting. Wait, what? But... We got to do them all at some point, you know. Either you either you have a hard time of it later, or you get through the harder part first. It doesn't matter. You still got to do it all. Uh, do you want served? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, let's see. What else? What else? Was there a game that didn't get votes that I wanted to be picked? Yeah, probably. Um, no one really voted for a few games that I'm really excited to play. But like I said, their time will come. I was I was a little surprised. I was not surprised, but I was also a little surprised. I thought more people were gonna be spoilery and they were going to uh, pick troll games or pick weird import games, and neither of those really happened. There were a sprinkling of, of each, but uh, neither one of those factions really came out in any significant way. If the pick is Clay Fighter, I'll buy it. Yeah, I will buy it. Uh, Trachea. Trachea was the only person who had more popular picks than, uh, Blitz, sub. Fryak can vote next time if his sub is still active. <laughs> you have a feeling Hexen may annoy me? We'll see. Um, I've heard that Carmageddon 64 is one of the worst... N64 games. But I used to play Carmageddon on my computer. And, uh... I'm curious. I'm real curious. Elmo? No. There were no Elmo votes. Neither Elmo game got votes. What were the imports picked? Um, we had a vote for... Uh, Densha de Go, or Go by Train 64. We had a vote for, um, we had a vote for Neon Genesis Evangelion. We had a vote for Sheeran the Wanderer 2. And we had a vote for Sin and Punishment. So those were the four import games that got picked. One through five are the games we already played. <laughs> yeah, I used to play Carmageddon 2 a lot. And that game was really frustrating because it was just, like, so busy. Like, they'd want you to kill everyone on a course and they'd put, like, 400 people on a course. Like, you'd have to be really thorough about it all. 
but it's been a long time since I played Carmageddon. Yeah, this is the lineup coming up. This is the lineup coming up. You just got a really bad personal pizza. Should you order a new one from a different place? Yeah, and also just go door to door and be like, hey, I got this. They gave me two pizzas by mistake. Do you want this pizza? And then you're a hero to them, but really, uh, you just got rid of a shitty pizza. You know? But yeah, Atticus, these are the next 10 games. This is what we're going to be playing. Hexen will either start tonight or probably tomorrow. We'll see. We'll see. Ah. But it was fun. It was fun seeing everybody's lists. I'm a data nerd too, so it was really, uh, really satisfying to go through all this. Put it together. We also have our first non-gray carts of uh, of the challenge. Tony Hawk is in a blue cart. No Mercy is in a black cart. What's up, Ramses? Yeah, now that people have seen one, they're gonna try and game number two, right, Hector? <laughs> no, he doesn't respond to my tweets quicks. I've tweeted him a few times. He's never responded. He's too cool. He's too cool for my lame ass. I was, I was working on a couple charts, and I just ran out of time. I couldn't get him wrangled in time. So we had to just go with text. Uh, not really, Ramses. It does. There are some fakes, but it's nowhere near the level of, uh, of the GBA. And Hexen got three votes. Yeah, Hexen got three votes. Yeah, there's not a lot of fakes on the N64. Yeah, don't buy anything from China. <laughs> That's just good advice. Yeah, you and Ronnie had uh, had what? Three games in common? Three out of five in common with each other? Hey, thank you. Mm -hmm. Ern just brought me a big plate of French toast, you guys. Should I show? Homemade brioche. With homemade brioche. Mm -hmm. You guys want to see it? The camera's not on right now. So it's up to you if you want to be tortured or not. Looks like this. Look at that. Thank you, babe. Did any people besides Mo and Cindy have more games in common than Ronnie and Sub? I don't have that information of uh, custom made. Like, I don't actually have that already, but let me kind of skim this real quick. Um, I don't think so. I really don't think so. Yeah, it really doesn't look like it. It does not look like it. I think they were the most in sync. It was really, it was really a very varied list of games. Um, and we had a lot of subs that didn't submit lists either. It could have been, it could have, it could have been more straightforward, or it could have been less. I don't know. I don't know, but there was a significant chunk of subs that did not submit a list. So hard to say.
There's a German only. Yeah, the with the censored Turok. Um, if it's been released, if a game is, because I just got another question about this from from Ronnie on Facebook. If a game has been released in more than one region, I'm only gonna play the North American version. Um, I might look at some of those as bonus games without 100%ing them. But if a game's been released in North America, we're gonna do the North American version. Was there any sub that was surprised didn't submit? Um, not really. There was a couple that I thought would have put lists in, but um, but it wasn't too big of a surprise. I was honestly more surprised at the number of subs that did submit a list. A lot of people really bought into that concept, and that was nice to see. But yeah, I did think about, initially, Endymion... I did think about replaying the games that got released in different regions. Like, you know, Mario 64, we'll do the American version, we'll do the European version, we'll do the Japanese version, we'll look for any differences. But that would just be really repetitive and time-consuming. I don't think it would make for as interesting a content. That's true. You're the only person who voted for Goemon and it got him in. Without you, that game would not be there. I don't think it's that everyone's sleeping on Goemon, it's that Tony just streamed it not too long ago. I've streamed it before. I think people are going for a different variety of games. But I do not mind playing through that game. Yeah, Ocarina of Time got zero votes. No one voted for Ocarina of Time. Yeah, I think people are kind of putting away the um, putting away the more popular games for later. But don't worry if your game didn't get picked today. Like I said, we're doing them all. Just means you gotta wait a little bit longer. Oh, thank you, Ronnie. Nagano is the funky first Olympics you can actually remember. I think mine was um, Lillehammer. I remember Lillehammer, but like just barely. Mike Pizza's Strike Land next time. Yeah, I mean, think about it this way. That list is going to be 15 games shorter the next time you guys have a crack at it. So. Any other votes? Yes, there was. There was one other vote for Beetle Adventure Racing. It got two votes. Two votes for Beetle Adventure Racing. And since you missed the first part of the uh, the data, Atticus, four votes was the most votes a game got. Any other votes for Revolt? No. You were the only voter for Revolt. Yeah, I think a lot of people will be submitting the same lists. And that's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. If those are the games you want to see, stick to your guns. If you change your mind, change your mind. Nothing wrong with that either way. No other votes for Doom 64. Just you, Ronnie. Um... 1992 was the year when they started doing it every other two years. 
Before that Hickler, they would do the Winter and Summer Olympics in the same year. Bomberman, you were the only person... You were the only person who put up any Bomberman games, Zero Six. Bomberman got almost no love in this poll. Despite having four games. If you sub on extra accounts, you get more votes. That's true. That is true, Quicks. Gex64 got three votes. Blastcore got two votes. There were two votes for Blastcore. Which I was rooting for, not gonna lie. <laughs> I was rooting for Blastcore, didn't get it. What's my favorite sport at the Winter Olympics? Uh, luge is pretty cool. I like watching luge. Hockey is a lot of fun to watch. Not the biathlon. I think the biathlon is dumb. I am proud of you guys. Yeah. I am proud of you guys for coming up with so many different games. I like the extreme sports more than, than the Olympic sports typically, but there's a certain level of prestige to the Olympics that, you know, the X Games isn't on the deuce anymore, and it's not, uh, it's not a Mountain Dew-fueled uh, <laughs> series of events anymore, but it, it, it lacks the weight, the gravity of the Olympics. The most surprising... There was a lot. There was a lot of surprise. I was surprised that Bass Hunter got two votes and that it got him fast. I was very surprised by that. Um, I was surprised that Superman only got one vote. One vote. I thought more people were going to play that troll card. Only one person did. Um, um, not really, Sub. I think I'd rather play Mythologies than any of the Mortal Kombat fighting games. When Mortal Kombat 4 caught up to it, I was just like, ah! But I think I could, uh, I think I could handle Sub-Zero before I could handle those fighting games. Everyone's saving the best for last. It's true. That desperation will settle in. Or I'll burn through five games really quick and everyone's like, okay, he's going too fast. Slow him down. <laughs> Fuck him up. I am, Ramses. I am. But I also don't mind. Like I said, we gotta play through them all. It doesn't matter. If Superman 64 ended up being the final game, that would be really funny. I would laugh. It's true. Scuddy did vote for Daikatana. What link? The video link? Yeah, that's pretty much the Daikatana meme. That's the big Daikatana meme. You bet Mario Kart 64 Majora's Mask are the final game? No votes for Mario Kart. No votes for Mario Kart. No votes for Mario Golf. And no votes for two of the three Mario parties. That was kind of surprising to see.
It is Atticus's birthday today. Happy birthday, handsome Atticus. It's your birthday to you. You can 100% Mario Party by yourself, but it takes longer. <laughs> Thank you for posting that clip, Rain. I'm probably going to hang on to all your guys' data from these nominations. And I might see, like, I might try and track how things change from uh, from vote to vote in some in some ways see if people abandon some picks or if they stick to stick to what they're doing South Park had two votes dorky you weren't the only one Yep. You were the only vote for Biofreaks. Yes. Yep, but a lot of fighting games did get picked. Most of the fighting games on the N64 got a nomination. Except Smash. <laughs> Nobody picked Smash. Anything other than Conquerors or South Park where the humor hasn't aged well in 2020? Carmageddon, probably. Um... What else? Gex, yeah. But in a different way. Gex's humor is aged poorly in a different way. Three different South Park games on the N64. Three very different South Park games. Yeah. The Duke Nukem games probably haven't aged super well in terms of humor. I think I've stalled as long as I can. I've stalled for a half an hour. If Mo doesn't get online at 3.30, I'm going to have to host Z-Fan. And he'll just... He'll host you guys into golf. I think. I think he will. Um, I think it does, Dorky, but I don't remember. I've barely played that one. Move on to an eating stream? Nah, I'm okay. I did spill a bunch of the syrup in my lap without noticing it, so that's the thing that happened. <laughs> He's not golfing today? Well, shit. You gonna try some Dr. Mario 64? Good luck. It's tough. It's a hard one.
Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> Thanks. You have like a sippy cup for my French toast? I could use it. <laughs> yeah, I'll just put a bite of French toast in my mouth and squirt the syrup in my mouth. Yeah, some games will need a multiplayer partner for the 100%. That is the thing that's going to come up more than once. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I may have some surprises in store for that as well. We'll see. Alright, I think I'm going to take Quix's idea. I think I'm going to take Quix's idea. I feel bad turning you guys loose before this golf tournament. Everyone's letting me down right now. So we're going to have to uh we're going to have to play some Neo Turf warm-ups. <laughs> <laughs> 